Hello everyone and welcome back to Modded Minecraft with Night Dagger episode 15. I am Night Dagger and I actually have quite a bit of work that I want to get done today so let's get started. Um, I did do some work off camera, I might show you in a little bit here. I was intending for this episode to be more about logistics pipes and other mod kind of related stuff than anything else but I decided that we found some resources during our last little adventure there that I would really like to put to use. That said, I am building a mob trap. Now, I'm lagging any time I look at these things because it's flowing water and I'm having a hard time rendering it while recording. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing to know about this mob trap is that it's not my own personal design. It is, it's a design that I have modified and adapted from someone else. I don't remember his name offhand, but I will link his video in the description because, you know, I believe in giving credit where credit's due. Now, I've already built two rooms out of the mob trap. I'm going to build the third one on camera so that you guys can see the design because it's a really good design. Now, there's a couple things that you need to know about mob spawners and the way they work. Now, number one is with a mob spawner, there are three different ranges. The first one is the spawn range, and that's the area where mobs can actually spawn. Now, it's roughly four blocks in each direction from the spawner, and one block above and one, one block below. So when you build a room for a mob spawner, you want it to be big enough that the mobs can spawn inside there. Number two, there is an internal check that Minecraft performs whenever there's a mob spawner nearby that's been activated to make sure that you're not getting you're not going to get zerged by like 5,000 spiders and I call it the zerg range because I mean that's kind of what it is um, basically if spiders are too close or mobs are too close to the mob spawner more mobs won't spawn so in order to produce a really effective mob trap you have to have a way to get the mobs away from that spawner that will get the mobs outside of the zerg check range and allow more to spawn the third is the activation range. That is the range where you can stand where a mob trap is active as opposed to not active. You can tell when a mob trap is active because the thing lights up with fire and the mob inside starts spinning. The magic number there is roughly 15 blocks, so I'm going with 14 to give myself a little more room for error. This here is 14 blocks away from there and 14 blocks away from there. So we need to start counting in this direction. So one, this will be one, two, no, we're not gonna knock me away from here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This is where our mob spawner is going to be. Now, from here, looking straight up at this thing, we want to go four blocks that way. One, two, three, four. There will be a wall there. Starting back from here. One, two, three, four. Wall there. One, two, three, four, wall there. And then back towards this way, we're only, we're only going to count three. One, two, three, wall there. So, let's go ahead and build up the wall. Now, I may need to go get some more cobblestone. I didn't really have a whole lot on me because I had to go get some water to finish the other parts of the trap. So I may need to go grab some more. Yeah, I'm completely out of cobblestone. So while we do that, we'll run back over here. A couple of minor changes that I made. I did put a lever on top of my seal here because I noticed something really interesting. Villagers can activate seals. I actually had a villager who 
teleported himself out into the jungle and was out there going, Oh my god, where the hell am I? How do I get home? Yeah. So I had to put a lever on that one to disable it. The one out in the jungle isn't disabled, but since it's linked to that one, it's not going to activate unless it has somewhere to go. Um, did a lot of research off camera. You can see I got some pretty cool stuff here. But I'll go into that next episode if I'm going to do a little more Thalmcraft stuff. Um, I have some more fragments of lost knowledge that I need to research up, but for right now, we're going to work on this mob spawner, because I don't know how long it's going to take me, and I want to do it all this episode. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to need a few more signs. That should be enough. Let's head back out here and continue the mob trap. Then after I get this done, need to go another two high. Kitty, you are not helping. I love you dearly, but now is not the time. Tend your brood. Don't bug me. Alright, and then from this block here, we're going to make ourselves the roof. Now, there are a few torches in there, so it's going to keep hostiles from spawning in there for the moment. And then later, water will keep any unwanted hostiles from spawning in there. So we'll have only the wanted hostiles spawning in there. Oh, just about derped right off the edge there. Wouldn't have been a major loss, but... Alright, now, this mob trap room here is 11 by 11. Or, no, it's 11 by 12. But this way here is 11. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we break a hole right here, that should put us in the... Wait, what did I do? I counted wrong, that's what I did. This puts us right in the middle of the room here. We're going to want to take out the lower two level of bricks. Just like that. And we're going to want to replace it all with stairs. Not signs, stairs. The signs come up very shortly. Alright, now, in line with this block here, we're going to break this just so that we can get out. On the wall here, we're going to place a sign, and then we're going to place another sign attached to that one, and one attached to that one, and so on and so forth, until you get the whole way back here. You should use nine signs for that process. Over top of that, we're going to fill in these blocks here. Now we're going to go get our water. We're going to come in here, and we're going to set up the water wash. There we go. That'll wash all the spiders down to right here. Where do we need them to go after this? Well, we need them to come here into the middle. So we're going to do this, we're going to extend this out just a little bit, ran out of cobble, 
again. As much running back and forth as I do, I may have to see about getting the mass fabricator up at some point here just to start making UU matter so that I can at least get quantum suit leggings. Because this is kind of ridiculous. Grab some tasty steak. Nom nom nom. And head back out. It's going to get dark. Don't really care. Okay, we put that there. We're going to come up here and we're going to break out that block there. And that block there. Why are we going to break those out? Because we need to set up another water wash to get the spiders into this chute. So we're going to put water there. The signs are going to keep it from backflowing, so it's just going to flow out here. And the other one here. And again, the water, or the signs, will keep the water wash from coming out and going back into the room. It's going to push everything out to here. On here, we need to get the spiders up a level, so we're going to put a stair there. We're going to put two blocks there. On this block here, we're going to put a sign. Then we're going to come down here. Not stairs. Cobblestone. We're going to build this out to here. We're going to connect it up like that. We're going to put this like this. And we're going to put some water right after we go get it. Ah! So much water on screen. Lagging so bad. Once I cover the water blocks up a little bit, it might help the lag. Okay. And that gives us our water wash to there, which if we break this block out, it should meet with the others in the middle. And then that should allow everything that gets into here to wash down into here. That's what we want. We want everything meeting up right there. Now, I think my dimensions might have been off just a little bit, but hopefully it doesn't cause a problem. We'll find out. And we're going to put that like that. We're going to need a couple torches, just for security's sake. We're going to, well, we're going to break this out here. We're going to put a torch right up there. And then we're going to put another one right there. And then to try and cut down on spawns, we're going to put one there. Now, we have two parts of this trap remaining to go. The first part is the crusher. We're obviously not going to want to sit here and bash spiders all day. We're going to want to be able to one-shot them no matter what we're using. So we're going to use a crusher. In order to do that, we're going to need a couple of components. Let's come in here and see if I have any stone wafers left. I have a stone anode which I will need, but I don't have any just plain old stone wafers. So I'm going to need to get some. Actually, I need to reserve one piece of stone, but the rest of it I can cook up into wafers. I'll use them eventually. I may as well have them on hand. So let's go come down here, toss our stone into our furnace. Let that start cooking up. Send the wafers up for me. Doing all right on power. Head back up. And you know what? Let's... No, let's not sleep through the night. We don't really need to. 
We do, however, need to make a couple of sticky pistons. So we're just going to follow the normal piston recipe, which of course requires wood and redstone, neither of which I have enough of on me. Toss you in there, break you down. Okay, two sticky pistons, and now I'm going to need some other resources, either redstone or slime. Not redstone, um, sticky resin or slime balls. Normally, I would go get some sticky resin off of the trees over there, but it just so happens that if I come down here, into an area that I haven't shown you guys for quite a while. Well, it just so happens that this room here is in a slime chunk. There's a big old slime derping around over here. Let's go kill it. Come here. And a little bit of that, and some of you, and... Oh, hi, zombie. And get some. Come on, thank you. Really? You do not mess with a man with a nano saber. I will kick your ass. All right. Enough screwing around down here. I do need to eventually come finish cleaning out those chests, but that can wait. Sometimes controlling this can be a real pain in my ass with the amount of lag that I'm getting at the moment, which I updated my Optifine to the smooth version, thinking, you know, it might help smooth out my frame rate a little bit, make it a little easier to play. I've noticed absolutely no difference whatsoever, aside from a weird texture on my portals now. Not to say it isn't helping at all, because it might be, it might just be a small change because my computer sucks, but meh. Alright, let's come on here, and let's turn these into sticky pistons. We're also going to need some red alloy wire, which I don't think I have any made up already. Nine pieces should be enough, because that'll give us 36 red alloy. That'll be more than enough. Um, I actually needed a little bit more smooth stone, so I'm going to have a button. I may have a button in here. I do have a button in here. Good. I also have... Oh, it actually does route them to... That's cool. No, I don't want the redstone tube. I want the stone wafers. Give them. Um, I do need the redstone torches, though. So, we're going to come in here. We're going to toss our wafers up here. We're going to toss our redstone up. The redstone torch. And we are going to need... A timer, which is a pointer, cathode, a couple anodes, three wires, and then some blanks. Like you, and there, and there. A little bit of that. Good. There's our timer. The next thing we are going to need, after we put the timer down, is a... No, I don't want it in search mode. Take it out. A not gate. Which is three anodes, a cathode, a stone wire, and a bunch of blanks. So I'm going to need to make a few more anodes. And 
and I need another wire. And some blanks. I need a cathode too. Okay, cathode goes there. Blank, 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 blank. Wire there. Anodes there gives you a not gate. And the last thing we're going to need is put it down. A toggle latch. Now I know there is a better way to do this, but this is how I'm used to doing it. I know there's like a state cell or something like that now. Yeah, a state cell, but I've never used it. I don't feel like using it right now, so I'm just going to do it the way that I'm used to it, and I might play around with the other way off camera. Toggle latch. Besides, the way I'm doing it gives you a little bit more accurate control. Um, need two wires. Two cathodes. A lever. Put it down. What is going on with my mouse? Okay, lever with cathodes like that, wires like that, and wafers like that gives us a toggle latch. Those are the three major components that we need. If this will put this down, those are the three major components we need to make this work. We're also going to come in here, we're going to grab our screwdriver out of our Miscellaneous chest, I guess it's in. There it is. And we're going to head back out here and we're going to wire us a circuit. Hello, spider. I'm building a trap to kill your brothers. How nice is that? Okay, so all of our spiders should eventually end up in here. What are we going to do to them? Well, we're not going to make friends, that's for sure. We're going to kill the little bastards. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to put a block there and a block there. On that, we're going to put these pistons. We're going to take our screwdriver. And we are going to rotate that around until it's facing the right way. Now we're going to break this off the back. We're going to build us a platform underneath here. And let's make this just a little bigger. Let's seal this off. May as well head over to the other side and seal that off too. Now, let's make this a little bit longer. Here we are going to put a, a pedestal. On the pedestal we are going to put a button. This is our kill switch. How does the kill switch work? Well, we're going to have red alloy coming down here. And I'm actually going to want this a little bit bigger. I probably don't need it to be. But I like having a little extra room to work with my circuits. The goal here is to make these push out. How do we do that? With a toggle latch. If we put a toggle latch right here, no. If we put the toggle latch right there, that's not gate, that's not a toggle latch. And we rotate that around. Actually, I don't want it there. I want it... There. Alright. Actually, I don't even want it there. 
I want it one more up. I want it there. Rotate that around. And... I completely screwed that up again. I haven't built this circuit in a while, so... I'll get there. Don't worry. Alright. And this we're going to connect using the red alloy to here. So that when this flips, the pistons crush. When it flips back, they retract. Alright. We're going to connect that like that so that when we push this button, it does that. But now we need a way to send this back. How do we do that? That's what the timer is for. Now, you notice that timer is currently disabled? I actually didn't even need the knock gate, did I? That timer is currently disabled. If we take and we connect another piece of red alloy, red alloy like that, let's set this for 5.25. My experimentation has shown me that is the correct number to use. So, say we're standing up here and we get our spiders all right where we want them, which is right in this corner. They're all squirming around and jumping all over the place and going, hey, I want to kill you. And I think I actually need to raise those pistons, because that's actually, no. That's actually supposed to be a block there. So, yeah, these need to come up. This one, anyway. So, we'll just put some cobble there. Red alloy. Jump up here. Put the sticky piston down. Put that down. On the back of here. Put that there. And we're good. Block. Block. Everyone's happy. Alright, so the spiders are in here, they're derping around, they're trying to get you. What do you do? You push the button. And it crushes the little bastards for five and a quarter seconds, and then it stops crushing them. Why do we want to crush them for five and a quarter seconds? Because that's how long it takes to get a spider down to the point where it has one hit remaining. So, we now have the crusher in place. There's only a couple more things to do. The first thing that we have to do, well, we have to go get the guests of honor. In through here, wait for the world to load. Here's a spider spawner. And I, whoa, hello. I gotta be a little careful about how I move around while I'm carrying this thing. I don't wanna, whoa, hello, lag spike. I don't wanna bang it around too much. Let's put it in here. And where are we gonna put it? We are going to attach it right to the bottom of this block. Oops, no, not there. You rotten bastard. Alright. Look here. Enough. We're gonna have to do this the hard way. That's where the spawner's gonna be. Uh, let's turn that off before we waste any more power. Let's pick that up. Put it right there. Break that. Break that. Fill that back in. And get the hell out of Dodge. Now, for the moment, I'm going to seal that. Because I'm going to break that. That is going to encourage a lot of spiders to spawn very soon here. You 
can already hear him derping around in there. There's one. Get out of my way. So, one down, two to go. That was Spidey 1. Next we need to go find Spidey 2, which is pretty much directly above me. So let's dig up to it. Here it is. Kill the spider. Pick up the stuff. Kill a spider. I want to make sure I cut the string away from the spawner first because I don't know if the spawner will get caught and have a problem moving, but I don't want to find out. Where did it spawn? Don't know, don't care. Pick it up through the portal. This one we're probably going to run into the same problem, so we're going to have to put the spawner down. And boom, boom, boom. Break you. Pick you up. Snap into place. Snap into place. There we go. Break that. Kill you. Break that. Rebuild that. Break that. And we got a ton of a very angry spiders that are trying to spawn here. I probably should have sealed this off before I did that. But whatever, that's fine. Actually, yeah, that's right. Okay. Two down. You can see them running around and they're all pissed off. So, two out of three. Let's go back through and get the last one. We're after Spidey 3. Which, where is he? There's two. There's three. He's up this way about 30 meters. Ooh, iron. Wait, that was another spawner. What the hell? This is Spidey, too. That one that I just put down there? That wasn't one of the ones I marked. That was a bonus spawner. There were four spider spawners here? Holy crap. Anyway, yeah. Pick him up and walk through. If I could figure out a way to do it, I'd put another level into this mob trap, but I can't figure out how to do it, so screw it. We're just going to drop this thing right about there. I'm going to just walk there and kill the spider. Put a block there. Put a block there. Break that. Pick you up. Snap you into place. Break you. Break you. Break you. Kill you. Kill you. And block, 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 block. Alright, the only thing left to do here is I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to leave this one unfilled for the moment.
right here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put something special. I'll get there in a minute. For the meantime, I need to finish building all of this crap. And you there. Just like that. Break that so that I can get down in there. And this one right here. Yeah, that should be it. Tag that. Build this up like this. And put you there and put you there. Now I just need something special. I need an iron fence. Which is produced like a regular fence, but using iron bars. I'll use the excess later, so I don't have to worry about wasting it. It's used for something that I'm going to be building in the near future anyway. Well, maybe not the extremely near future, but near enough. So, we'll head back out here. Right here, we're going to put this iron fence. That is going to keep the spiders from getting out. Which is important. Now, for this part, we have to break that out and then put a block there. That's going to let the spiders get into the water tunnel. Pretty soon, you'll see some spiders show up right here. Any day now, spiders. Any day now. Maybe I should use glass so I can monitor their positions a little better. Oh, there we go. There's a spider. How you doing, buddy? You're gonna die soon. And here it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna break that and place that there. That's going to let the spiders out. They're going to come out and be all sorts of pissed off. They're going to join their brothers over here. And then here, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to put a block there. I'm going to break out that one. Put a block there. And that's going to let those spiders out. And they're going to come over here. Where are we going to stand? We're going to stand right here. We're going to wait a few minutes. Let all of our spiders gather in one place. That's a lot of pissed off spiders, isn't it? When we think we have enough, what are we going to do? We're going to walk over here. We're going to punch the kill button. Ow! Got a little bastard. And these spiders are now hurt enough that one punch finishes them off. When you get to a point that you're not one-hitting spiders anymore, punch the button again. Listen to the wonderful sounds of spiders dying. Punch the spiders in the face. Get poisoned again. I'm actually taking damage. That's not cool. Hey. More dead spiders. We stand right here, we collect all the drops. And we get poisoned again. We come hang out over here. Spiders are going to spawn. From all three spawners. Where are they going to go? Right over here. So, 
This is how you build an experience trap. Notice my level. Level 24. Let's give these spiders a few seconds here to, you know, get in position. Actually, while we're at it, let's run out and get some glass. Let's replace the waterways with some glass so that we can see the spiders coming. Uh, glass. Yeah, I have 52 pieces of glass. That'll be enough. Got 40 more here. That's plenty. Uh, let's put my... There. That recharges my drill. And now I'll switch back to my nano suit, because without that, these spiders are actually going to hurt. So, let's jump up here, and... Hey, spiders! How you doing? How you doing, guys? You doing good? That's good. A lot of spiders. And as you can see, since our trap is complete, oh, hello. A couple of them got out. Oh, evil, bad spiders. Whatever shall I do? I'm completely immune to their attacks. Almost completely immune to their attacks. Die. You too. Need my cobblestone on my hop bar. Put a stairway up here in case that happens again. Shouldn't, but you never know. That's a lot of pissed off spiders, huh? Dig this out here and let's just put this here. How did the spiders get up there? Who knows? That's a lot of spiders. That sounds evil. Yes, that is every bit as ridiculous as it looks. Alright, I'm starving to death, which is why I'm taking damage. Nano armor does make you pretty much immune to starvation damage, but it will occasionally hit you, so I do need to go grab something to eat. That's the main downside to experience spawners when you're wearing full nano. It's not so much that you're actually in any danger, it's that you get really hungry really fast. However, I'm also getting a ton of experience, and I'm getting a ton of strength, which is actually a pretty good research subject. I'm also getting some spider eyes, which are good research subjects, and I still have two spawners down there that I can do something with, and believe me, I plan on it. Now, people who are somewhat familiar with Thaumcraft are going to be saying, why did you go to all the trouble of doing this? You're going to be doing your enchanting using these soon. This experience spawner is completely worthless. Because, you know, it you're gonna have Vs. You're gonna be doing all of your enchanting using Vs with the occultic enchanter and all that crap. Well, that's true. However, it's not completely useless. 
because experience has another use. I'll get to that in a future episode. But right now, this has been Night Dagger with Let's Play Mod at Minecraft. This was episode... why do I have... random block of water down there that's not going anywhere. And all three of them it looks like. That's great. Let's figure that out before I call the episode here, huh? Dig our way in. Why is this not working? Hey. You. Not funny. Ah, oh, my nano suit's out of power here. That's fine. Okay. Well, I officially don't know why it's not hitting this block. But I mean, if the spiders get here, the only thing they can do is jump up in there, and eventually they're going to get into there, so it doesn't really matter. It'll work as is. Alright, so this has been Night Dagger with Let's Play Mod of Minecraft, episode 15, I believe this was. Um, when I get back next episode, I'm going to start doing some more mod-related stuff, probably work on my logistics network. Like I said, I was going to do this episode. Maybe do some more stuff with Thalmcraft. Um, in the meantime, off-camera, I'm going to dink around with these spiders and get a whole bunch of experience, a whole bunch of spider eyes, and use their stuff for research, and all sorts of other cool stuff that's kind of boring. Well, this one isn't doing it. Whatever. I'm going to sit here and have some fun killing some spiders, and I will see you guys next time.